Good morning. Surveilling the world, forecasting the future, controlling the world, managing it, or saving the world are very different tasks that need totally different technical solutions. We are living in a time of big data, and this raises the hope that we may now be able to see what is wrong and how to fix the system. This motivates one to build a digital twin or a crystal ball. And of course, we know of various companies that are doing right that. Palantir recorded future are just some of them. And of course, the military has also built their prediction machine. Uh, that's probably somehow related to, to the data that the NSA has been collecting. And there are also very powerful simulation tools such as sentient world that are trying to simulate the world and its future. And the World Economic Forum also is collecting a hell lot of data in their global cyber security center. There is a, a very close relationship between the World Economic Forum and the United Nations and CERN. And so with that data, a lot of things can be done. But should we control the world with a war room? This is at least an idea that has been around for some time, including the NSA. And we do think this is a pretty concerning concept that's likely to go wrong. And why is that? This is because it's not so easy to connect the dots. The idea of a purely data-driven society, I think, has a number of flaws. And some of the problems of a data-driven approach are sensitivity and uncertainty. And we know that from the prediction of COVID-19, but also the prediction of world population, peak oil and climate change uh, comes with quite some uncertainty. On the other hand, there is this problem of overfitting that um, if you have too many parameters, you would just fit noise or some random patterns in the data. So there are spurious patterns and there are correlations that do not mean causation. Whether crime causes unemployment or the other way around, for example, makes a very big difference in terms of the policy that would help. Then there's also the problem of classification. There are false positive and negatives in any measurement procedure. You have to consider that. And for example, when it comes to the determination of the epidemic situation, false positives and negatives make a huge impact. On the other hand, we have seen that uh, the problem of fairness is an issue with uh, AI systems. There has been machine bias against people of color, minorities, women, and that is unacceptable. It's much more difficult than expected to solve for this. Nevertheless, these kind of algorithms are being used to uh, detect terrorists and criminals. And over here, the false positive rate is actually pretty high, often way above 90%. So we need to consider this. So it's not enough to have good intentions when we build a digital twin. And that is, of course, being done by many countries in the world. And the uh, European Union also wants to do that. And uh, one of the goals is uh, basically to make the world sustainable. And another goal is to maximize planetary health. But in many cases, there is this idea that AI would figure out the best possible solution, and then it would be imposed on the world as if it was a better one and uh, all knowing dictator and uh, it would force us basically to change our behavior. And in this connection, uh, various concepts have been developed, including the social credit score in China, but also in the West, we have approaches based on behavioral manipulation using personalized information 
And overall, the trend seems to be towards a technological totalitarianism. And I think this is very dangerous because <clears throat> optimizing the world needs to choose a goal function. This goal function in the end is one dimensional and it's oversimplifying the world. Humans in contrast are engaged in many different goals and that requires freedoms in order to make those different uh, goals and uh, solutions compatible, okay? Now, in fact, also the tech billionaires uh, have seen the danger that we would end up in a matrix if we just has AI systems control the world in a data-driven way. And in fact, it could end very badly because those systems make predictions about the future. And here's one pretty old prediction uh, going back to the limits of pros, but there are newer ones. And many of them would uh, show that there would be a, a collapse of the economy and also a reduction in the population. And so basically those systems seem to propose that we need to learn to die. And uh, in fact, people have proposed um, trolley problem solutions and triage. And, and so we are heading towards uh, algorithm based life death decisions. I think it's totally inappropriate. And I've warned of this already many years back in a couple of papers uh, where I've pointed out we need to build uh, a new upgraded digital democracy and capitalism to survive. So we need to change the way we are running the economy and our society. Also, we need to consider that complexity of systems grows faster than data and data grows faster than processing power. This has implications for the way of controlling these systems. We need distributed control and uh, we need to realize that the nodes, in, that could be companies or people or cars or whatever, they lose importance as interaction effects dominate and network effects take over. And this is typical for complex systems. These complex systems need to be managed in a different way. Their centralized control comes to its limits and we need to have more autonomy and built on principles of self-organization. Um, and we need uh, digitally assisted uh, systems. And the idea to control every node is actually pretty much misleading. It's uh, not going to give us the result that we want to have because of the many interaction effects. And instead, in these systems, we need to learn how to use self-organizations form intelligence or how to make use of complexity. Complexity itself is not a problem. It could be a solution if used well. In complex network systems, will not always see the intended effects, we'll see instead side effects, cascading effects and feedback effects. And those feedback effects can be used and that's what we need to learn. Complexity promotes self-organization, can be used to solve problems, as I said. And I will illustrate it for the example of urban traffic control. Here we have implemented a novel approach where the traffic flows control the traffic lights rather than the other way around. And we have done it in a particular way that uh, is based on short-term anticipation using uh, traffic physics. And you see that we will get self-organized green waves that nicely coordinate traffic flows and actually reduce travel times and also um, have less emissions so the environment will benefit as well. These kind of approaches can also be transferred to our economy to make it more sustainable and in particular to learn how to turn today's supply chains into a circular economy. And uh, of course, the Internet of Things can help here, uh, but it will be important to implement local feedbacks rather than putting all the data in one big database and uh, having one huge AI system control the entire world. We we'll, should use the Internet of Things to measure externalities locally and then to, to create the right feedbacks, the right kind of incentive systems and 
one of such system that we have proposed is actually a socio-ecological finance system that we call finance four or a fin four uh, where there would be multiple currencies reflecting different kinds of externalities that have been measured and in this way we would introduce new forces into the economy that would lead to a co-evolutionary process so every company every actor would try to improve over the current situation and everyone else would adjust and eventually the system would uh, get better and better more efficient more resourceful more sustainable more resilient and uh, we would get a circular economy and sharing economy so i do think we are just ahead of a paradigm change a shift in thinking away from focusing on the nodes of the network towards focusing on the interactions that allow self-organization to work for us if we do it right. So there's something like a Galilean revolution 2.0, we could say. And um, we really need to learn to think about complex systems differently from simple systems that we had in the past. Thank you very much.